What's up, yens, guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, we're going to continue on with my lake breakdown series, and we're going to talk about Lake Wilhelm. Now, Lake Wilhelm is an impoundment of Sandy Creek, and it's found in Mercer County in the heart of Maurice Goddard State Park. Now, Lake Wilhelm is roughly 1,860 acres with a max depth of 25 feet. Now, the impoundment was completed in 1971, so it's been around for quite some time. And as most of you already know, Lake Wilhelm is also called Sandy Lake as it is an impoundment of Sandy Creek. When we talk about a lake like Wilhelm, we're going to highlight key features. We're, we're going to talk about water, and we're going to talk about the bottom, and we're going to talk about key structural elements like timber and weeds. We're going to talk about the shoreline and what it's composed of. And we're also going to talk about the forage or the bait fish in that particular lake. The reason for that is the more information you guys can learn about a body of water, that's going to help you guys start piecing the puzzle together and help you guys locate and catch more fish. And that's what these lake breakdowns are all about. First and foremost, let's talk about the water in Lake Wilhelm. The water is extremely fertile and they have heavy, heavy algae blooms in the summer. Now, being that it only has a max depth of 25 feet, you guys are not gonna see a true thermocline in Sandy Lake or Lake Wilhelm. However, being that it still has dissolved oxygen, you guys are gonna see less dissolved oxygen in the summer months, particularly August. So what that's gonna do is, it's actually gonna drive most species of the fish higher in the water column because below eight or nine feet there's going to be less dissolved oxygen so in the month of august you guys want to focus your lures and your baits in the higher end of the water column because that's where those fish are going to be suspended because that's where the most oxygen is all right what does the bottom of the lake look like now most of wilhelm is going to be mud and muck however on the north end of the lake you guys are going to see some sand and you're going to see some gravel in addition to that, we're going to have some submerged creek channels, which serve as very, very good structure. And you also have some submerged roadways or road beds that are going to serve as solid structure points that will hold fish. Now, the scenery around Lake Wilhelm is absolutely beautiful. You have rolling hills, you have wooded sections, and you also have farms and fields. Now, there's about 25 miles of shoreline around the entire lake. And the lake is really split up into two sections. You have the Maurice Goddard State Park, which is the majority of the lake, and then you also have State Game Land 270 towards the north end of the lake. And really, I'm gonna say the split is around 79. As 79 comes down, somewhere in that area, that's where you're gonna see it split off. All right, guys, whenever we break down a lake like Wilhelm, it's critically important to talk about structure points. And Wilhelm has lots and lots of structure points that will attract fish. First and foremost, we're going to talk about submerged vegetation. Now, the submerged vegetation is primarily going to be milfoil or pondweed. Now, you guys are going to find the majority of that submerged vegetation on the north end of the lake. In addition to that, there's a lot of deep weed edges that are anywhere between three and six foot deep. Those weed edges are going to hold fish and when you find them, those are awesome and excellent areas to focus on. Another key structural element to Lake Wilhelm is timber. And timber is very prevalent throughout the lake. Now, primarily in the state game land section of the lake, you guys are going to find a tremendous amount of standing timber and a tremendous amount of fallen timber. Those areas are going to hold fish, particularly early in the season. So it's important to kind of work your way into some of those areas, maybe do some vertical jigging, and find and work that timber and it'll be productive for you. All right, guys, one last thing for me to talk about here. The Fish and Boat Commission. It's important to outline how fantastic of a job they do. That organization and that group of individuals does just a fantastic job protecting us as fishermen, protecting the fish as a resource, and protecting the state of Pennsylvania. Now, the Fish and Boat Commission have a program called the Fish Improvement Plan. And what that allows them to do is enhance the key structural elements of a lake. That's critically important to us as anglers 
because not only does that give the fish a better habitat to live, to spawn, to hide, and just to live in, but it also gives us key elements to hone in on that attract fish. So the Boat and Fish Commission have done an excellent job with Lake Wilhelm, and they've added key structure elements like bass nesting structures and structures for turtles. The Fish and Boat Commission are the ones that are dropping in porcupine cribs and rock humps and tire reefs, and they're also felling trees and moving timber structure around. The Fish and Boat Commission, they implement these particular elements and what this does is it just improves the overall lake for the fish and its habitat. So there's lots and lots of these elements in Lake Wilhelm and we're going to try to cover that because again, if you guys can find these elements, it's not only going to help you find and locate the fish, but it's going to help you guys catch more fish overall. All right, guys, let's talk about the species of fish in Lake Wilhelm. So really quick, Lake Wilhelm has a good population of largemouth bass, black crappie, and bluegill. It also has a walleye population, a musky population, white crappie, yellow perch, channel, and brown bullhead catfish. Now I see Lake Wilhelm is primarily as a bass lake or a largemouth bass lake. The largemouth bass population is very stable and often you guys are going to see fish out of there over seven pounds. Now, the bluegill and the black crappie population are going to be your second highest. And it's important to say that one of your main forage fish in this particular body of water is going to be those juvenile panfish. So those juvenile black and white crappies and those juvenile perch and those juvenile bluegill. The largemouth and the muskie and the walleye, they're all going to eat those types of fish in this lake. So the numbers are very, very good. Let's talk about the walleye population very quickly. The walleye population heavily depends on the stocking effort. So the more fish that are stocked in that lake, the better the chance that that population is going to continue to grow. So check out your biologist reports there. And a lot of times that's going to give you guys that same information. However, that doesn't mean that the fishery is terrible. Lake Wilhelm is a very decent walleye fishery. You're just not going to get the same numbers that you're going to see in a Pimatumi or some of these other lakes that just hold more walleye throughout the season. All right, guys, one additional tip for you when we talk about the forage in Lake Wilhelm. Now, in years past, we used to talk about the golden shiner population. And talking about matching the hatch, throwing golden shiner type baits will produce a lot of fish for you. Now, in recent years, as of 2010, one of the last biologist reports indicated that the gizzard shad population exploded in Lake Wilhelm. Now, this has adversely affected the panfish population in the lake, but it's also given predatory fish another larger bait fish to prey on. So you guys have two additional options. You can throw golden shiner type baits or gizzard shad type baits, and they're both going to be affected on Lake Wilhelm. All right, guys, I know I've given you a tremendous amount of information about Lake Wilhelm. But now what I'd like to do is I'd like to just go ahead and jump into the map. Let's talk about some of the key structural elements, show you guys my markup, and hopefully it'll be beneficial for you when you're talking about fishing Lake Wilhelm into next year. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started into the discussion. We're going to take a look at the map. So I'm going to zoom in to Lake Wilhelm. Now, you guys will notice here that I have a tremendous amount of marks. So we have to move quickly in order to cover this information. We're going to work north to south here. So I'm going to just pan into the north end of the lake and I'm going to describe each element as we work through. So you guys will notice the creek channel at the very top of here and it's marked in yellow. That's going to be the yellow line. I did my best to try to mimic exactly where this creek channel runs. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but you guys get the point. It's going to be close enough for you guys to be able to locate that channel as we move down through the lake. Now, the north end of the lake, this is going to be the state game land section. So, one thing to note, this entire end of the lake is going to be completely filled with submerged timber and submerged weed beds. You're going to have anywhere from one to three to six feet of water. So as we work down here, just know that this whole section of the lake has a ton of timber and a ton of weeds. Now, as we move down here, you're going to notice we're going to hit Cemetery Road Boat Launch. So this is an area where you could launch your boat and fish that north end of the lake. 
you have the creek channel coming down, and then we hit the roadway right across here. Now, one thing to mention, okay, this end of the lake is actually a propagation area. So in the state game lands, they have areas marked off that are supposed to remain undisturbed. So you cannot, to my knowledge, get in there and do any form of fishing or hunting. So this propagation area I have marked off in red. You guys have to look for the signs. We're not going to discuss any of the elements in there, but the channel is going to run through. Again, there's good weed structure, and then we're going to get to the other end of the propagation area and find Shakely Vale Road Boat Launch. Now, this is a decent launch because you're going to be able to launch right here. You're going to have some really good elements right off the bat. You're going to have submerged timber and really awesome submerged weed structure here. You're also going to see that Mill Run Creek mouth runs in. So Mill Run Creek is going to run right in here and you're going to have a bit of a channel that's going to link up with the main channel. So this is a good spot. You have the bridge here and the roadway um, and this causeway is going to act as a structure point for additional fish to kind of congregate. Also, anytime you have an area like this, when the wind's blowing from the south, it could potentially blow the bait fish up against those banks. So anytime you get a causeway like this, similar to what we have at Pymatuming, you have an opportunity for bait fish to be pushed and congregated up against that structure. So as we work south here, you have a really good uh, bay here to the left with submerged weeds. You got submerged weeds and timber all through here in the channel, and this is gonna run three to six feet of water. So again, just look for submerged timber and the water, and also these weed edges in that three to six range, that four to six foot weed edge, those are the areas where you guys wanna cast stick baits to and look for fish right along those weed edges. So the channel's gonna work down. As you can see on the left, State Game Lands 270, a tremendous amount of timber and weeds all the way through that. We have some islands here, and we have this weedy bay. Anytime you guys find a weedy bay like this, this is going to be a good area to do some casting. So it's a good area to focus on, and we're going to continue south. Submerged weeds through here. You have this where it comes in really tight, and you also have backup road boat launch. So there's another boat launch here for you guys to launch. And then we're going to hit Route 79. So the Route 79 split. And this is where, to my knowledge, it turns into Maurice Goddard State Park. So this area, it's going to get tight, but you're going to see some weed structure through there. Three to six feet of water, it's definitely worth fishing. So as we get on the other side of 79 here, we're going to see another bay. And this is an awesome, awesome spot to do some fishing because you're going to have a very weedy bay in the water level is going to be anywhere from three to six to 10 feet of water. So in this bay, you're going to want to find these submerged weeds. And also you're going to find some bass nesting structure in here. So bass will actually nest in there and they will spawn. So, you know, certain times of the year, you probably want to stay out of that area. However, you know, that's going to be a good structure point for you later in the year. In addition to that, we have falling run Creek and the mouth is going to run right here. And that channel is going to run out and link up with the main channel. And also this kind of creates another channel and works itself back into this cove. So this bay or this cove right here, this is just absolutely dynamite. You have points, you have uh, drop offs in there, you have good structure points. Um, so that's a good area to focus on right outside of the 79 split. All right, as we work down, you have porcupine cribs right here, 10 feet of water in this general area. Um, so look for those. That's going to hold fish. As we move south, porcupine cribs in eight feet of water right here. Um, you have three to six, and then you have eight at the split at the point here. So three to six up against the shoreline, and then you got an eight foot drop off right where that porcupine crib is going to sit. Now you have boat launch three across the way. So there's another good launch and a good parking area for you. You can also do some bank yanking there because there's a spot where you can get up close to this causeway. All right, so you have good submerged weed structure, you have the channel running down, you have porcupine cribs, and on the other side of this channel here, on the other side of this particular causeway, you're gonna see porcupine cribs right here. You're also gonna see man-made rock humps 
So again, thanks to Boat and Fish, they dropped this particular structure in there to increase fish habitat, to, to improve on it, to give the fish somewhere to hide and live. So you have that structure there. You have the porcupine cribs just south of the state marina in the state park boat launch. Now, in the state park, they say that it's illegal to fish in the marina. So you may want to stay outside of that area. However, I've also heard that if there isn't any boats currently moored in there, that you could potentially fish in there. My, my thought for you guys is to check the website, check to make sure what's legal. My best bet would be for you guys to stay out of there altogether so you don't get yourself in trouble. But you can hit this channel and you can hit these porcupine cribs and this raw comp right outside of there and still have a potential to catch fish. Now, as we work down here, you're going to get to about 12 feet of water. On the opposite side of the lake, you're going to see Showfield Run Creek. Now, this is going to run in, and that channel is going to meet up with the main channel. You also have really good submerged weeds all along this shoreline. As we work down, the channel runs down. We run into another weedy bay here. We have submerged weeds, and we also have tire reefs. Now, what I believe to be tire reefs... Um, they're not marked as porcupine cribs, so my, my bet for you guys is to check this structure out. They're probably tire reefs in amongst these weeds. So this is going to be a money spot for you. You can get in here and troll that. You can get in there and cast that. Now, you're also going to have long run in the creek mouth right here. And this is going to come in and, again, link up with the main channel. Now, as we work south here, the pink lines are going to indicate road beds. So think about this for a second. You have a submerged road bed here. That's going to be a transition line. Anytime you have a transition line, it's going to hold fish. In addition to that, this transition line goes right over top of the channel or right below the channel. So that's a very, very good spot for you guys to check out and try to catch some fish. Now, submerged weeds on the left side, 12 feet of water. You got, again, you got some more tire reefs um, right here in this cove. You got some good weed structure. You have another submerged road bed here, and you have porcupine cribs on both sides in 8 to 10 feet of water. Awesome, awesome spot right off of boat launch too. So this is the area where I would probably start my musky fishing venture. I would probably launch off a of boat launch too. I'd probably try to hit that submerged road bed in that channel, work those weeds, and then continue to work south towards the dam. Reason for that, you're in a little bit deeper water. All right, guys, so let's continue here. So we see on the opposite side of the lake, we're going to have bass nesting platforms, porcupine cribs, submerged weeds, and James Run. So James Run with a tire reef in about 10 feet of water. That's also a very, very awesome spot to do some fishing. You're going to have this channel, and that's going to link up with the main channel. And here's where we start to hit 18 feet of water. So now you got off a of boat launch, too. You have porcupine cribs in 8 to 10 feet. Porcupine cribs 8 to 10 feet, porcupine cribs 8 to 10 feet, and really awesome submerged weed structure. 3 to 6 feet of water up against the shore. There's going to be a drop off into about 18 feet of water. Okay, as we work south here, we're going to have 18 feet of water. We're going to follow this channel down, and we're going to run into another submerged road bed. So you have porcupine cribs here, 10 feet of water. The submerged road bed, 18 feet of water. Porcupine cribs on the opposite side in 10 feet of water and an additional porcupine crib there. Now these cribs, a lot of times you're gonna, I'm gonna mark one mark, but there's gonna be multiple cribs there. So check those areas out, find them on your fish finder, and really try to hit those areas. Continue to work south here. Submerge weeds up here, three to six, submerge weeds, and then you're gonna have porcupine cribs right before the bend. 12 to 18 feet of water, and then as we work south, three to six along the shoreline, and then this area you're gonna see felled trees. So there's going to be a lot of good wood structure and timber on the edge of the water here, and that's going to hold your springtime crappies. So as we work south, 12 to 18 feet of water. Now you have stone deflections and rock rubble humps. So again, fish and boat, they drop some rock and rubble in here. Great fish habitat. That's going to attract fish. You can hit that from shore. As you guys can see here, it looks like there are some rocks and some riprap here. You're going to see a vehicle parked here, so that's an awesome spot for you guys to get out and do some fishing. Head south, 3 to 6 along the shoreline. You're going to run into bass nesting platforms here, 12 to 18 feet in the middle. And now we hit another very interesting part of the lake. Dugan Run on the opposite side. 
that's going to come in. That channel is going to link up with the main channel. You have submerged weeds just outside of it in this cove. You also have a submerged roadbed running across the lake to boat launch one, 12 to 18 feet in the middle. Awesome, awesome spot, especially with this rock rubble hump and six to seven feet of water on the opposite side. Launch from boat launch one, and you're immediately on the submerged roadbed. Troll that, troll that, troll that. Run your big crankbaits, stay on that submerged roadbed. It's a transition line. Run through that stuff and make sure you try to hit the channels there and it will produce fish. As we work south, three to six against the shoreline, submerged weeds all through here. Porcupine cribs on the opposite side, bass nesting area next to submerged weed beds. 12 to 18 feet. The channel is going to continue to run south here. Submerged weed beds into this cove. Bass nesting structure, three to six feet of water, awesome, awesome weeds in here. So this area right here is gonna be an excellent spot for you guys to focus on. Now we're gonna work south, bass nesting structure, porcupine cribs, three to six feet, 12 to 18 feet in the middle. This is where we get to deeper water. 18 to 25 feet of water near the dam, and this is where you're gonna run into your felled trees. So again, boat and fish, they felled these trees here to create structure. This is gonna be your deepest point at the dam breast, anywhere from 18 to 25 feet of water. Typically 24 is what I've seen. So with that said, we've gone over this information very, very quickly. But as you guys can see, as we work back up the lake, you have a lot of good weed structure. You have a lot of good man-made structure. You have the submerged road beds. You have awesome creek channels. You have bass nesting platforms. You have stone structure. And you just have a couple of really awesome spots to focus on. That's my official markup for Lake Wilhelm. Now what I would like to do is to get into some tips and tricks and some techniques that will help you guys catch species specific fish throughout this lake. All right guys, in the last segment, we're gonna talk about fishing tips and techniques. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about largemouth, crappie, walleye, and muskie. We're gonna start off with the largemouth bass at Lake Wilhelm. So my tips and tricks for you and the techniques are starting with mid-June through September. Your best bet is to fish early morning and late evening. If you guys focus on shallow cover and weed edges in about three to six feet of water, it will produce fish. Also spinner baits, jerk baits, and soft plastics in and out of that timber on the north end of the lake can be very effective. Early season, the state game land section is great because of that timber structure. Now, if you're looking for a midday bite, that can be obtained in about seven to 12 feet of water off of points, humps, stream channels, those submerged road beds that we talked about earlier, and any of the man-made structure options that we discussed. Now, late summer, my recommendation for you guys is to run rattle baits through that timber. The fish are gonna be shallow because of the depleted oxygen levels that time of year. October and November, your best bet is to vertical jig in about 15 to 25 feet of water in those creek channels. Now crappy. April and May, you guys are going to want to look for felled trees. Also look for riprap and focus on your weed edges in about three to seven feet of water. Now you guys know that crappy love fatheads and you can easily hook those up on a simple bobber rig and be effective. Now June and later, you're going to want to focus on deep water structure in about 20 feet of water and vertical jigging is my choice strategy. Now for the walleye at Lake Wilhelm. May through June, you're gonna to wanna to troll worm harnesses in about eight to 15 feet of water in the daytime. However, at dusk or at night, focus on casting stick baits on the weed edges in about four to six feet of water. Those fish are gonna come in shallow as they do on many of the lakes in Pennsylvania. So fishing from shore is a very good option. In July, you're gonna to wanna to look to run deep running crankbaits on about 18 to 20 feet of water in those stream channels. You always have the option to do some vertical jigging, especially with shiners or wind drifting worm harnesses in the fall. I would stay in that eight to 15 feet of water range in the fall if you guys wanna produce walleye. Now lastly, musky fishing on Lake Wilhelm. Troll, 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 and troll some more. Troll the stream channels with crankbaits down about six to 12 feet in about 12 to 18 feet of water. Those fish are going to sustain in those creek channels. They're going to suspend in that water in that 12 to 18 feet range. My bet for you guys is to run tough shads, leos, and wileys. If you guys troll at 5 miles per hour 
and you get those baits out at the respective distance to get down 6 to 12 feet, it could produce a muskie. Always look for bait fish. When you guys find bait fish, stay in that area until you run out of gas. So my thought is, you find the bait fish, you fish those areas until you produce. Now, if you guys are working from shore, you're casting from shore, my tip for you is to walk up and down the shoreline, cover as much water as possible, and cast near the creek mouse in the spring. If you guys focus on those areas, you could hook and land a muskie from shore. All right, guys and girls, I know I threw a ton of information at you, which is typically my goal when I do these lake breakdowns. So hopefully you guys found this information beneficial, and hopefully it helps you guys locate and catch more fish on this particular body of water. All right, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. I greatly appreciate it. It's just a lot of work to do these types of lake breakdowns, so I really appreciate it when you guys go out there and hit that like button. Now, if you guys like the content overall, please subscribe to my channel and make sure you ring that bell for me so you can get all the new content that I'm going to be posting this winter. All right, guys, I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you very much for watching. Tight lines and see you next time.